In today's video, I'm giving you five tips that will help you be more successful when keeping a bubble coral in your reef tank. The bubble coral is an LPS coral with large polyps that look like bubbles, and they come in a variety of different colors. There's a yellow bubble corals, green bubble corals, and white bubble corals, also called pearl bubble corals. Now coming in at tip number five is coral placement. When placing the bubble coral in your reef aquarium, I recommend placing it near the sand bed or the bottom of your aquarium. Now, if you have larger pieces of flat rock, maybe you can put it up in the mid section of your aquarium, but for the most part, I highly recommend putting it down in the sand bed. One reason for this is that they require a low to moderate flow rate, and so keeping them in the sand bed, they'll do just fine. Now, once you've picked out the perfect spot for your bubble coral, make sure that you leave plenty of room and space away from neighboring corals, because tip number four, beware of their very large sweeper tentacles. Now they have sweeper tentacles that come out and will sting neighboring corals and some of these tentacles can get a few inches long. Sweeper tentacles are what corals use to establish their place on the reefs and they can sting other corals. So unless you want your prized possession or other corals next to the bubble coral to get stung, try to plan for space and make some room for your bubble coral. Now, one of the biggest tips for having a bubble coral and getting that bubble coral into your reef aquarium is coming in at number three would be handling the bubble coral. You wanna be very careful when handling a bubble coral because they are very delicate. Now, the polyps on the bubble coral will inflate to take in food and absorb the light to photosynthesize, but they will also deflate when the lights go out or if something is bothering them for an extended period of time. The skeleton of this coral is very thin and sharp, so it's important not to handle them by the fleshy parts or the polyps at the top of the coral. Be sure to only handle this coral by the skeleton because if there's any tears or rips in the fleshy part that expose the skeleton, that can lead to infection and a decline in health of your bubble coral. Now, I've always handled my bubble coral from the bottom. I'd scoop up underneath the coral so that I'm holding only the skeleton because of those polyps that deflate when you take it out of the water. It puts a lot of pressure on the top skeleton. So you just wanna be careful handling that coral, especially if you don't get a bubble coral that's glued to a rock or on some kind of frag or coral disc. Handling the bubble coral properly will set you up for success in your reef tank. So with that, tip number two is water movement or water flow. Bubble corals just need a moderate to low water flow. They don't need a lot of water current blasting into those large bubble polyps. And the main reason for this is that a strong current or water flow just blasting that coral is going to tear the polyps and push them down into their sharp skeleton and expose the skeleton and that will lead, of course, to infections and death. But all you need is very gentle water flow going over the bubble coral, enough to not allow anything to land on top of the coral or settle down and stay on the coral. You want the water to keep moving the coral and keeping things suspended, but you also don't want enough that it's ripping the flesh off of the coral. And you might say, hey, that's an obvious one, but too many times I've seen it where water flow has been set too high in a certain area and corals that shouldn't be getting that much flow. Remember, these are not Acroporas. These are not SPS corals that like a ton of flow, even as much flow as like a torch coral or a frog spawn coral, uh, they require a little bit less flow than that. They don't need to be moving and jostling all about. But for me, I like to keep the water flow at more of the lower side. So that's why I recommend placing the bubble coral at the bottom of your reef aquarium in the sand bed. So that way it experiences less water flow than the bubble coral being low at the tank you're going to experience more moderate levels of water flow. Now coming in, tip number one is that bubble corals are photosynthetic and they get their nutrition from the lights over our tank. However, they will benefit greatly from feeding. So if you ever wanted to see a unique coral eat some food in your reef tank, a bubble coral's feeding response is pretty awesome. So you can see here the way the little tentacles look and the bubbles look in this bubble coral because it's hungry, it's looking for food, and you can feed it things like frozen mice's food, cyclopes, uh, reef nutrition has a whole bunch of food. Any coral food that you 
use for your tank or maybe coral food that you would like to use for your reef tank, you can give it a try with the bubble coral. They will benefit and grow from food. Again, it is not required, but it's something that is a lot of fun to do. They will accept a variety of food. My favorite thing to feed is mysis shrimp, but like I said, other coral foods and even pellet food will work as well. So if you plan on keeping a bubble coral or maybe you currently have a bubble coral in your reef tank, I got a bonus tip for you. Now, Than from Tidal Gardens has shared this tip and I've also seen this in my experience as well, that if your bubble coral is damaged or infected or starts to die off, the bubble coral can get down to even just one polyp. And if it completely disappears, just leaving behind a skeleton in your reef tank, do not give up and do not lose heart. Now, it may take some time, but you'd be surprised that you could possibly see new life and the bubble coral start to return and grow back. I've seen this happen before and I've even seen it with hammer corals that have died in my reef aquarium. It completely died or I thought it was completely dead. The polyps receded back into the skeleton and then months and months later I started to see a baby come out the side and start to grow and it grew into a brand new branching hammer coral. So like the hammer coral, the bubble coral can do the same thing. So don't give up on it. If you found this video helpful, then I know you're going to like this video right here where I talk all about my top five favorite LPS corals. Oh, and it really helps if you click that like button and subscribe to the Coral Reef Talk. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.